handsome little point-and-shoot Soviet-era camera, the Lomos Mina 8M. It's an absolute no-frills camera. It's 100% manual. There's nothing to help you focus, and it's up to you when to advance the film to the next frame, if you want. It's virtually one step up from a pinhole camera in that sense. The lens, however, is pretty nice. It's made of glass for one, which means it produces sharper than expected images, especially when compared to other toy cameras in this league. It's a 40mm f4 lens, so it could be excellent if all the stars align. f4 to f16, that's the range that you get. The shutter speeds range from bulb to 1 over 250. Again, not the most amazing range there, but this camera was built for optimal conditions only. The various speeds are also represented by weather icons such as cloudy, partly cloudy, sunny and so on. The shutter release is at the top of the camera. It does however come with a leaf shutter. It also has a PC sync socket, which means it can sync with flash at all speeds. That's strangely overkill for such a cheap plastic box, but there you have it. To take a shot, you have to cock the shutter first, but be careful, it's very easy to obstruct the shutter cocking lever with your finger and thus overexposing the shot to oblivion. The camera takes 35mm film and is loaded from the back like most other cameras. There is a gear that engages the film sprockets and advances the frame counter. Talking of which, it is up to you to advance the film to the next frame after each shot. Otherwise, you will continue to expose onto the same frame. While this is a terrible fault most of the time, it is ironically one of the reasons why the Smina is so beloved and has such a big following. Multiple exposure. To rewind the film, simply turn the rewind knob on top of the camera. It does also come with a cold shoe, which is located right on top of the camera as usual. Sadly, this particular camera is missing it. It's dropped off at some point in the past, but I can imagine this is easily rectified. The Smina 8M surprisingly takes decent photos thanks to the glass lens. In very, very, very good light, with the correct exposure, it can equal virtually any camera out there, to be fair. But the stars really have to align. Most people that use this camera for the first time would get mainly blurry or overexposed photos at first. This is because the camera is made of low weight plastic and brushed aluminium, so it is really light. The shutter release is also not very smooth, so sometimes it takes a little bit of an effort to actually press it. The combination of the shutter release and the light camera results in blur. The shutter cocking lever is also very easy to obstruct, leading to extreme overexposure. After a while though, you do become conscious of these and adjust accordingly. For a size reference, here it is next to my Olympus 35RC. It's slightly larger, but the Oli weighs 4 to 5 times as much. For those of you who don't know how small the Oli is, here is the Smina next to a coffee mug. For an even more universal reference, here it is next to an iPhone 4. Anyhow, the best way to use this camera is just to have fun with it. Whatever settings you think you've chosen are probably wrong anyway. So remember, don't think, just shoot.